Hi everyone and welcome to Spanish 1010 at East Tennessee State University. Uh, my name is Matthew Harrison and I'm excited to have the opportunity to be your instructor this semester. Um, this is the 100% online section of Spanish 1010, so um, that means that we do not have any required face-to-face -face meetings. There also are no required virtual meetings for this course. It is totally what we call asynchronous online, uh, designed in sort of a work-at-your-own-pace type format. Uh, that being said, there are YouTube videos such as this one every week where I go over things that you should know, important things for the course, and I'm always happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one. if you have any questions. We can Zoom and talk through any issues you're having or that kind of thing, uh, but there are no required meetings for this course. Um, that being said, like I said, I am here to help you with anything you need at any point in time. My email address is listed here for you. It's harrisonmt1 at etsu.edu. Uh, please make sure that you don't forget the one on my email address. Uh, there are actually three Matthew Harrisons who all work on campus at ETSU, and we're constantly exchanging emails with one another, and um, one of them is a chemistry professor, and he gets very confused uh, when he gets emails in Spanish. So, uh, so please make sure you don't forget the one there. Um, I do answer emails within 24 to 48 hours. I put that as a general time. Honestly, guys, I normally answer emails the same day that you send them. I, I really try to stay on top of my email. I always have my phone in my hand pretty much, so I try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, as far as this course goes, this is a general introductory study of Spanish. So we will focus on uh, the basic skills of spe speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Um, and this course is designed for students who have very little to no prior knowledge of Spanish. So maybe you've never studied Spanish before in your life, or maybe you took just a little bit of Spanish in high school, but you don't remember any of it. Um, that would be appropriate for your level of study here in an introductory course. Um, that being said, if you have already studied Spanish extensively, maybe you took through Spanish 4 in high school, or you just feel like you really already know Spanish, uh, you do have the option of testing out and placing in a higher level course. So, uh, you know, no reason for you to be here and be bored if you already know um, those basics. So you do have the option, there is a proficiency test that you can take, I believe it's free. Um, and you sign up here in the testing center, it's offered in the library. And you go and you take your exam and depending on your score, they will place you in either Spanish 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you have the option of testing out. So if that situation applies to you, feel free to talk to me about it more. Uh, Liv Detweiler is the person who is in charge of that. So you can reach out to her directly as well if you're interested in scheduling that. So just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, this is the textbook that we're going to be using for the course. It is Exploraciones, the third edition. And I've included the ISP number for you here. I also gave you a direct link to purchase just so we can make sure you get the right thing. Um, this is sort of um, unique to the ETSU Spanish department, so I want to make sure everyone understands. Um, this textbook, if you are planning on continuing on to take future Spanish at ETSU, whether you, uh, for a lot of people it's required, so if you're getting a Bachelor of Arts degree and you know that you're going to go ahead and take Spanish 1, 2, 3, and 4, um, you will want to purchase the Cengage Unlimited four-month access. Um, and what that means, we use the same textbook for Spanish 1010, Spanish 1020, and Spanish 2010. So basically Spanish 1, 2, and 3 all uses this book. Spanish 4 will use a different textbook, but if you know already that you're for sure going to be continuing on and taking Spanish 1010, 1020, and 2010, go ahead and purchase the Cengage Unlimited four-month access. It's $119, and it will last you for all three of those courses. So if you buy this now, you won't have to invest in another book when you go to Spanish 2 or to Spanish 3. Now, if you're just here for a semester or you're transferring this course back to a, another university or a community college or whatever your situation may be, then maybe you don't want to buy the unlimited access. Maybe you just want to buy the one semester access, which is a little cheaper. Um, but if you already know that you're going to be staying with Spanish, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend going ahead and getting the unlimited because it's way cheaper that way. Uh, there's a direct link here to all of those options, okay? Whichever one you purchase, please, please, please make sure you have MindTap access. You have to have that for our course. Um, MindTap is the system where uh, all of our homework is housed. It's where your uh, electronic textbook is housed, your quizzes, your exams for this class. Pretty much everything uh, takes, takes place in MindTap. I I've heard students call it the D2L of the Spanish department before. Uh, so it everything is in there. So you want to make sure that you are um, getting that. 
Now, if money is an issue and maybe you're waiting on financial aid or you're just waiting on payday or whatever your situation, you do have the option of going ahead uh, this very first week of class and getting a free three-week trial that will be good, obviously, for three weeks. And um, whenever you go ahead and purchase the real book and everything, they can convert that three-week trial into a real account so you don't like lose anything. They'll transfer over all your assignments and anything you've done will go with you to that paid account later. So um, because this is a fast-paced course and assignments are due the first week, we always ask the publisher to please give us that free three-week trial for students who might be waiting on financial aid or that kind of thing. So please, please, please go ahead and get this textbook immediately. Go ahead and get access to MindTap, get all that part squared away. You will need an access code to get into MindTap and that course key is listed for you here on the syllabus. Um, okay, some other things that are required in addition to the textbook, uh, you do need to have online, reliable online access. Uh, you also need to have the ability to record yourself both video and audio. So um, <laughs> obviously in a totally online class you need to have good internet, right? That makes sense. Um, and students always ask me, well for the audio and the video, do I have to go out and buy a fancy webcam? Absolutely not. Do not go buy a webcam just for this class, please. Um, if you have a smartphone, um, then you will be able to do all of the video and audio recording that I need you to do for this course. Um, now, for the MindTap assignments, the homework, the quizzes, the test, you will want a real computer for that, like um, a laptop. But if you, you know, just for the video and the audio, you can do that on your phone. That's not uh, not a big deal. You will need Zoom capabilities as well, so please make sure you have access to Zoom, that it works with your device, uh, that kind of thing. As I said, we can use that for office hours if you have a meeting and you want to talk one-on-one -on -one about something or just, you know, you're having trouble with a MindTap activity and you want to look at it together, we can do that on a Zoom call. Um, or, um, you know, at the end of the semester, we're going to have oral interviews, which I'll tell you more about in a little bit, and we'll use Zoom for that as well. So there are also some recommended course materials. All of these are free. Just... Um, uh, online Spanish dictionary, some help with conjugation, some free flashcards for all the chapters. Those are there just to help you. Uh, this is how your course grade is going to be determined and I'm going to go through each one of these in more detail in just a moment. Uh, this is the grading scale we will use. It's standard throughout the university. Uh, please note that you do need a C- minus or higher. That's a 70% or higher in order to advance to Spanish 1020. So if you get below a 70, below a C-, minus, then you would need to repeat Spanish 1010 before going on to Spanish 1020. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, let's talk about all your assignments. So everything that's up here, I've just kind of put in more detail for you down here. So uh, you do have MindTap activities. These are the largest percentage of your grade. And uh, these are assigned as homework. You have all week to work on them. Uh, pretty much everything for our course will be due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. I open everything for you uh, early. You have the ability to work ahead if you want to do that. Um, and I usually send out a weekly announcement to you on Monday telling you everything that's due for the week. And you just have to get it turned in before Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Um, that being said, there are activities in MindTap, and we'll look at them in a second, um, and they just give you some additional practice with the vocabulary and the grammar that we're studying and kind of help you prepare for the quizzes and the tests and the oral exams. So um, that's how the homework works, and like I said, it's all in MindTap. You also have quizzes for each chapter. There are a total of five chapters we'll be covering here in Spanish 1010. That's uh, Exploraciones chapters one through five, and uh, you'll have quizzes for each chapter. Something important to know, I said you'll have quizzes, plural, for each chapter. The way that MindTap is set up, um, you will have multiple quizzes for the chapters. You'll have like a quiz for two vocabulary quizzes, two grammar quizzes, and like a mixed quiz for everything. So um, rather than giving you an individual grade on all those, I average them all together and put it in the D2L gradebook as um, chapter one quizzes, chapter two quizzes. I just average them together to uh, just for simplicity purposes but um, you will see them listed as multiple quizzes in MindTap. And I'll talk to you about that in just a moment, show you how those look. Um, you do have an exam um, for most chapters in this course. Um, you have chapter exams for chapters one, two, and four. So you're probably wondering, gosh, why don't we have exams for chapters three and five? Well, you don't have exams for those chapters because the midterm comes right after chapter three. So it just seemed really stupid to make you take an exam for chapter three and in the same week do a midterm. That's just kind of dumb. So I'm tried to, you know, cut out what I could and make your life easier. So 
after chapter three, you'll take your midterm, and then at the very end of the course, after chapter five, you'll have your final exam. Um, something to know, all of your exams, the, the chapter exam and the midterm exam, both of these will take place in, um, excuse me, all, all of your chapter exams, chapters one, two, and four, will all take place in MindTap. So you'll do those the same place you do your homework, same place you do your quizzes. But the midterm exam and the final exam, those will take place in D2L. Uh, for all of these, you have approximately three hours to complete them, and you have only one attempt. So it's one of those things, once you sit down and you open it, you can't like close out of it and go do 10 other things and come back. Like when you go to take the exam, you need to sit down and finish it all in one sitting. Um, and if you have any questions about that, feel free to let me know. I do a study guide for the midterm and a study guide for the final, so you'll, you'll have some materials to study. Um, and then, of course, the chapter exams come from your questions and mind tap and your homework and your quizzes. So assuming you're doing what you're supposed to be doing every week, um, it should be pretty easy to keep up. Um, you do have some compositions in this course as well. As I said, our goal is to assess your speaking, reading, listening, and writing abilities in Spanish. So we use these compositions to assess your writing. And students hear compositions and they go, oh, my gosh, I have to write an essay. Uh, it's not necessarily an essay. Um, you're looking for around 150 words, which is um, usually like a paragraph or two. It's not um, anything super crazy. So um, you the topics for your compositions will be listed in D2L, um, and they're based on the vocabulary that you're learning in the chapters that specific week. Um, something that I do to help you, if you would like, uh, before the composition is due, I give you a specific deadline on the syllabus, but... Um, you can actually email me your composition. Once you have it written out, you can email it to me, and I will proofread it for you and edit it and make comments and send it back to you in a non-graded fashion. So you just have to email it to me, and I will look at it and give you feedback and give it back to you, and then you can correct it before you turn it into the formal D2L Dropbox. Now, when you turn it in on D2L and you turn it in the Dropbox, that's for real. Like, that's not for non-graded feedback. That is, like, that's the real deal. It's going to get graded. It's going to get a real grade, okay? But you can email me anytime. And I will give you free feedback and let you make corrections. Something to know about this course. Um, you've learned about, probably in English class, about plagiarism and about how if you use other people's words, you have to cite that and blah, blah, blah. Well, in the, in the Spanish world, Google Translate is considered to be plagiarism. So if you use an online translator of any form, and I promise you, I can take one look at a paper in about 30 seconds and see if you've used Google Translate. Okay, so don't do it. Um, Google Translate is considered to be plagiarism. It will get you referred for academic dishonesty. You'll have to sit in front of the dean. Um, it's a big deal. So please, 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 I would rather you write the absolute worst paper of your life in the most horrible broken Spanish ever and get feedback on it and correct it than try to use a translator and just get an F and end up having to retake the course. So um, please, please, please make sure that you're using your own words use the vocabulary and the grammar that we're learning in this class, and please send it for non-graded feedback. I'm happy to do that for you anytime, okay? Um, discussions, you do have some discussions for this course as well, and these are designed to give you speaking practice. And we're using a site called flipgrid.com. If you have a cell phone, if you have a smartphone, go ahead and download the Flipgrid app. It is the best thing ever, and it's way easier than using the website, I think. You can totally still do it on the computer, but I just recommend doing your phone. Uh, these are video discussions. So if you have ever heard of Snapchat, if you have a Snapchat, this is kind of the same thing. Um, it's just in a more of a classroom setting. And the way these work, uh, there's a Flipgrid for every single chapter that we cover. And the Flipgrids are practice for this oral interview that you will do at the end of the semester. And uh, what I do, I take the questions from the formal oral interview and I integrate them for you into the discussions to give you some practice. So that way, by the time you get to the interview, you've seen every question that's going to be asked and you've had time to practice with it and um, that kind of thing. And what I will do, I watch your Flipgrid video and um, I take notes as I watch it and I make comments of anything that you mispronounce. So... Uh, and then I reply back to your video, either with another video, or I'll comment in D2L sometimes and tell you, hey, at the 30-second mark, you said hola, and you should have said hola. And um, I'll just kind of help you with that pronunciation, so that way you can go back and practice 
before you get to the real oral interview. So the discussions in Flipgrid are a completion grade. If you do them, you get 100. The oral interview is a grade grade, and um, I want you to do well on it. So I just I like to provide these discussions in Flipgrid just to give you a little bit of practice to make sure you're getting there and um, you're doing well. So uh, speaking of that final oral interview, uh, there is a Google Doc here where you can go ahead and sign up for our course. Oral interviews are going to take place on Saturday, December the 5th. And um, when you click on the Google Doc, it opens up and it gives you a list of all these times. And you just get to select the time that works best for you. Interviews begin at 8.15. I just want you to put your name. I want you to put the section you're in. I have two sections of Spanish 10th in the semester. I have a 901 and a 903. So I just want you to put which one you're in so I know. And then give me your phone number. That way if something happens and I'm you know, having technical troubles or whatever, I can call you. Um, and that's where we go. You just kind of start signing up and they go all the way until 8.45 that night. So please um, just select whatever time is convenient for you. I'm pretty much going to be available the whole day from 8 in the morning until 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> so just whatever time works best for you. Um, go ahead and put this date on your calendar now. Mark your calendar for December the 5th and plan on doing that that day. Of course, if you have a conflict, um, you can email me and we can work that out. But um, please go ahead and if you can, ask off work for that day, plan for that day, just like you would a final exam or anything else. Okay, those are all of our assignments. Um, generally, I don't accept late work. Um, however, I will say uh, I tend to be very flexible with you. If you email me and you're having a problem, like just talk to me. I'm a really chill guy. I will work with you. Um, that being said, if you do absolutely have to submit something late, there are unavoidable circumstances. There are penalties for those percentage-wise, and you can read about that there. Uh, I do not reschedule oral interviews, and I will not allow you to take the final exam late because those happen the very last day of class, and I have to have grades posted the next day. So um, those are the only two that you absolutely like can't do late. Everything else you can, there's just... Uh, percentage taken off but honestly guys in this course where everything is open to you on day one and you can work ahead there really is no reason for anything to be turned in late like if you're you balance your time well and you plan you should be fine um, we've already talked about academic integrity make sure you're using your own work make sure you're not using a translator um, if you have a disability and you need any kind of accommodation please feel free to let me know um, just some other general advice that I always put in um, so this course is totally online. As I said, there are no meetings. Uh, everything is found in either MindTap or in D2L for our class. Um, I do ask that you're very active in the course, so make sure you're logging in daily, you're checking your announcements, you're checking your email. Um, I try to be a good communicator and reach out to you frequently. Uh, people always ask me, well, uh, Professor Harrison, how much time should I devote to this class? How much time do you recommend per week I should devote? And that's a really hard question because everyone's different. Um, I find that like eight to 10 hours a week is a good amount of time. Now, if you are the kind of person you learn really fast and you pick up things quickly, it probably won't take you that amount of time. You might do it in five hours. But for some people, if you're maybe a slower learner and you have to spend more time, maybe it's going to take you the whole 10 hours. So um, everyone is different. So I think you'll get a feel for it as you go through the course. But I would recommend just as a general rule of thumb, 10 hours a week, and that is including everything. That's time to watch the YouTube video lectures, that's time to do your homework assignments in MindTap, that's any test or quiz or composition, all that stuff. Everything is included in there in that time. Um, guys, again, this is a very, very, very fast-paced course. There's a lot of information covered in only 15 weeks, so it's very important that if you are having trouble with something and you don't understand something, please, please, please ask me. Make sure you watch the YouTube videos that I've made. I really spent a lot of time creating those and uh, I incorporated formative assessments throughout, so there's times where I'll ask you to pause the video and work out a problem and click play. So those are there to help you. Um, every week you're going to kind of do the same thing. You're going to read a couple of pages in the chapter. You're going to watch the YouTube video that I've created, um, and then you'll have some activities to do in MindTap, usually around 25 per week. And I'm going to show you those in just a second. Um, that same kind of routine you'll follow every single week. Uh, students always ask me, how do I type accents? I've given you some info on how to do that here. If you have technical issues um, with D2L and that kind of thing, uh, you can reach out to the IT office and their information is there. Okay, this is my favorite part of the course. Um, I am a, try to be a super organized person 
and everything that is going to happen in our course is on this list, on this course calendar. So I recommend getting out your cell phone, going ahead and putting all these dates in the calendar so you have them. If it's not on this calendar, it is not happening, okay? I don't like surprises. I hated those professors in college that, you know, were always throwing things out at the last minute or they never answer their emails. So I really strive to not be that person. I, like I said, I live on my email. I'll try to get back to you within 24 hours or less. Everything on the syllabus you're going to have to do is on this page. No surprises, okay? Um, so for example, for the first week, you can see what you're going to do. You're getting used to D2L and MindTap. You're watching this welcome video right now. Uh, you're reading these certain pages in the textbook, not the whole chapter, just these select pages. You're watching the YouTube video lecture. And then you are uh, introducing yourself in Flipgrid and you have these activities in MindTap. So that's how that works. For the whole class, you can see all the way through every assignment for the entire semester is written down for you. I've told you when to start working on your composition. I've told you when to turn in for non-graded feedback, when to turn in the real thing, so on and so forth, when your midterm's gonna be. Um, I've reminded you to study for the final and the oral interview. It's all on here. So, And they're all hyperlinked. You can click these buttons. And I've reminded you to confirm your time for the oral interview. You can click these, and they'll take you right to where you need to go. So again, if it's not on here, it is not happening. So please make sure that you are um, following that. Okay. So that is there for you. It is there to help you. Um, okay. Let's take a look really quickly at D2L. Um, everything for our site is here in D2L. If you look at the content tab, you can see um, I've included a few things for you. And my Wi-Fi is always slow when I try to make a video. It's super fast until then. Um, over here, you can see our course schedule and our syllabus that we just looked at. All of my YouTube videos for each chapter are listed for you here. Information on how to register for MindTap is here. And then let's say you're struggling with a certain chapter. You're working on chapter one and you're really having trouble with definite articles. You can see here uh, there's specific help for you if you need additional help. That's listed for you here under chapter one links and helpful info. You just click on definite and definite articles and there's a little bit more detailed explanation there if you need that or more practice. Same thing for all the chapters. Uh, the oral interview questions are here as well as the grading rubric that you're going to see and a sign-up sheet with the Google Doc that we saw earlier. Compositions are here, links to the Flipgrids are here, practice midterm and final, and real midterm and final are here. So everything is in content. Um, I will be using this, um, the news feature, to post all of your announcements every week. As I said, I'll also email them to you just for convenience so that you have them, but I will post them in D2L so that you will have those um, listed for you here when you sign in. I haven't made any news items yet, but you'll see those here. Um, and then you'll be able to see your grades under the grades tab and you'll turn in your compositions under the Dropbox. Uh, finally, let's take a look at MindTap. This is what it will look like when you log into MindTap. You can see all the weeks are laid out for you. It tells you how many assignments you have for each week. Um, so here on week one, you can see all the assignments you have to do. You have unlimited attempts. You can do them as many times as you need to until you get the grade that you want. Um, those are all listed for you here and you just go to the end. It looks like a lot. Some of them won't take you more than a minute or less to do. Um, when you get to the end of a chapter, like this is the end of chapter one here at the end of week two, um, you can see all those quizzes I was talking about, how they're, they're just multiple quizzes on different topics based on what we studied in the class. So there's one quiz on definite and definite articles, one quiz on vocabulary, one quiz on the verb ser, and um, you'll take all those quizzes and I'll average them together. And then uh, your exam is also listed on here just as chapter one exam, capitulo uno, hola que tal. So you'll have all that there. If at any point you have any questions and you want to talk about things, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you also have your ebook is here for when you read, and you have a flashcard feature so you can study there. Guys, again, I am here to help you. My email address is harrisonmt1 at etsu.edu. Please email me, email me at any time. I'm here to help you with whatever you need. And um, yeah, hope you guys have a wonderful semester and I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.